All right, so here's the Tesla PowerShare system that was installed. All right, so you have this glass cover box. They ran these two conduits down here. One's going up here. They didn't um, completely finish this yet because I'm gonna upgrade this panel to a 200 amp, which they're gonna do as well because it's only 100 amp. Um, and right now it's a 60 amp fuse. So they're worried that if I use a 60 amp charger, um, which will charge at 48 amps, plus whatever else is in the house will be too much. Um, so yeah, they were kind of like, uh, we need to upgrade that if we wanna keep a 60 amp. Anyways, this runs all the way up that new conduit, okay, up into that box. That wire's out there because I asked them to add a 1450 as well to the front, so in the future, if we need to add another car charger, we can just plug one in the wall, right? They have this uh, special meter thing here. I guess it goes in between this. Um, PG&E has to install that apparently, but again, they are doing a 200 amp thing, so can't do it yet. Anyways, they ran like a comms cable, so like a data cable into that thing and then it's going over there. So that cable runs into there, goes into here, and I think, I don't remember if it came out and then went into there as well. I think it did, if I remember correctly. Um, I wasn't like watching the whole process, but I did watch quite a bit. Um, this box, I don't know if it's just this one they installed. Um, I don't know if they normally put this sticker here or if they added that label there because it's really hard to get this open. Like you have to push this in and then push this. And even then it doesn't work right because this latch, it kind of catches on that. So I found that I kind of have to push it over that way while I'm pushing it in and then I can kind of get it, but I kind of need two hands. Let me see if I can do it with one hand. Probably not. <laughs> Try pulling it with this hand and then do that and it's not quite, I can tell if it's unlatched all the way. Let me undo it real quick and I'll be back. Okay, I got it, so that's what it looks like. Also, this piece up here scrapes on there. So let me see if I can do it again. I'll do it while holding the phone, but I don't know if I'll be able to record what you need to see. Let's, I'll do like fully zoomed out. Okay, so push in really hard here, and I'm gonna use my other, my index finger basically to pull and push over, okay? Or my middle finger in this case. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see any of that, but come on. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to do this while holding a phone, so give me a second again. All right, so basically what I was doing is when you push this, if you push here, you can see it kind of twists it a little. And the reason is this little bracket kind of hooks into the, the latch here. So I guess I could kind of fix it by either sanding off this a little or do that if I really wanted to make it easy to open. But I guess it's kind of a security system so people can't just open it and turn it on or off. Um, although they do have this here to lock it, but actually this mechanism that makes it tricky to open might be a better lock mechanism. Anyways, this turns on and off the um, charger that's at the front of the house, so let me show you. Uh, I'm not sure if it cuts off other stuff, but for sure it like shuts off the um, the charger. So right now I turned it back on and again this thing is a little high so I actually have to pull this down a little in order to get it to go and lock in. Alright, so there we go. Alright, this is an old um, solar system that I had set up. So here's the panel. Um, well I'm not going to take this stuff out but this used to be the pool pump and they ran the new wires into that. And it doesn't say, but I, yeah, oh, it is. Okay, so there's the 60 amp. So it's a 60 amp. Before it was just 30 amp. So they ran that new wiring into that since we don't use the pull pump anymore because the pool's just a pit. All right, anyways, let's go to the front. I lied, we're at the side of the house. Okay, so they ran this other junction box there. They ran the wire down along the side. They wanted to hide it, make it look neat. So they hid it along the side of the gutter here. And then, they went down inside the garage um, and then they popped it out here. The NEMA 1450 is actually behind this wall. Um, so it's the other way, facing the other way. So that way they put the plate, the NEMA 1450 on the wall, then they ran a thing out and then ran it this way. And then they put this here. So that's the Tesla charger. Um, I do need to set it up. I kind of wish they made, um, a matte black of this, uh, which they do, but I guess they wanted this like glass looking stuff here. All right, eventually my truck's gonna be matte black, so yeah, I wish they gave the option, have maybe like 
well, white's better with heat, so I guess that's fine. Anyways, um, I'm gonna have to set it up now, but that's the power share thing. I haven't actually tried plugging this in my car yet. So this actually has um, both the J1772 and the Tesla. So if you just pull this out, this is the regular Tesla adapter. And then if you pu uh, push this button and then pull, you can hear it unlock, you hear that? Then it pulls this whole thing out and then you got a J1772. Um, again, this is this charges at 48 amps. Right now the electricity here is way too expensive. So I'm not actually gonna use this for charging my house. Uh, I mean for charging my car, but I'll use it for charging up my truck. I mean, for powering my house, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting all tongue tied. All right, so we got this. You push this button and it opens the charge door. All right, and we can plug it in. I'll charge for a little bit just to see the charge speed. Um, it should be going at 48 amps. I don't really have anything running in the house right now, so we shouldn't have any issues with that. Um, but let's see here, okay? So you can see it's charging at 11 kilowatts, right? 48 amps, 233 volts, 234 volts, wow. So that's faster than other um, uh, Tesla destination chargers I've gone to. Like usually when I go to other ones, the voltage sags a lot more. Um, I think theoretically I've seen up to 240 volts on some, but yeah, for this kind of charger, not bad. You can see to go from 54 to 80%, it would take two hours and 45 minutes according to that. Again, I'm not using this for charging because uh, I can charge elsewhere. So anyways, um, yeah, I can charge elsewhere for cheaper. So with your phone nearby, um, you can go ahead and push that. It un um, locks it and then you just pull it out. All right. And the cable all like just wraps around there to kind of keep it more organized. I'll probably have to fix it later because the cable honestly is in my way, but I guess then it kind of protects your hand from the wall. I don't know, but there we go. You can see I only had to unwrap it like once or twice and it reaches the truck right now the way it, the place it is. Um, but if you don't want somebody like walking into it, then obviously <laughs> I'd have to unravel it more. Also, they had a lot of waste wire. I asked them, like I said, you can just leave it there and I'll see if I can do something with it or just if I need dispose of it or recycle it. But uh, yeah, so. That's pretty much it for now. Um, I'm pretty sure the power share thing isn't set up right now. I need to set up the Wi-Fi for this. They did the power share box on the back um, earlier. Uh, they actually took a very long time because they hit ran into a lot of snags. They got here around 9 and they finished like around 11, so 11 p.m. So it took a long time for them to do this. Um, adding the 1450 did complicate some stuff because they uh, we're trying to fit all the wire into the smaller conduit and um, like the I guess one person knew to like remove they were doing some stuff to like remove extra wiring so that they could combine the grounds and other things like that um, to make more room and in the end they ended up having to strip all that wire out cut it off and then um, yeah basically extend the wires with new wires which ended up working out well so We'll see how everything else goes once I can get this set up. If I can't set it up for some reason, then I'll probably have to reach out to Tesla and have them help reset it and set it up. Um, these boxes only like 2.4 gigahertz uh, WPA2 uh, networks. Probably lower security is fine as well, but uh, it's somewhat picky. So I don't know, I'm surprised. I don't know why they don't just add a five gigahertz card or something. Maybe it costs an extra like five, 10 bucks or something. I don't know um, for them to do it. So maybe that's why they're not doing it with the thousands or millions of these they sell. They're trying to save a few dollars there, but everybody's using five gigahertz. They should be upgrading this stuff. Anyways, um, I'm gonna connect that to my network and then we'll see, or I'll try to. All right, bye for now.